famous uh, black preachers of the circuit at that time in the 40s. So, um, um, so uh, Dexter Avenue Baptist Church hires him. The, Dex the deacons hire him. But what they don't know is that he's vehemently opposed to Jim Crow. So when he gets to there, he refuses to ride on the back of buses. He refuses to go to theaters and restaurants where black people have to go to the back or on the balcony or, you know, they can't sit and eat. They won't be served. Um, and, of course, another I major issue that's going on at that time is the rape of black women by white men. Um, there's a book um, um, by a Wayne State professor talking about Rosa Parks' involvement in researching some of the cases of some of these rapes that were occurring of black women by um, white people. And so he begins to give sermons on this. He begins to give sermons about Jim Crow, against Jim Crow. He begins to give sermons um, a, um, a, about these rapes of black women going on in uh, Montgomery, Alabama. So he begins to give these sermons, and the deacons are like, you, "This, we don't, you know, that's not what we do. We get along with the white folks." They thought in their mind that being middle class and not talking about stuff like segregation, that they would get the white folks got along with them. They eventually fire Vernon Johns. Um, uh, Vernon Johns, uh, uh, before he gets fired, of course, another thing he says is that we don't have to go to these stores, these, these white stores, and be mistreated by, for every little thing. Some stuff we can do on our own. We can sell fish. We, uh, we got many black people go fishing. We can sell the fish. We, some, we got people growing, um, raising chickens. We can sell the eggs. Um, we got people growing gardens. They, we can sell tomatoes. So he begins to set up a little shop in front of the church on Sunday morning selling these things in his overalls. This is undignified to the members of uh, Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, particularly the deacons board. So along with all the other stuff he's doing, they fire him for that. Um, and they say, we got to find number one, a preacher who's dignified, who comes from a middle class family, who um, um, highly educated, like Vernon Johns, but is young and we can control him. We, 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 he, he's not so set in his ways like Vernon Johns is. And of course, they hire a young person just graduated from seminary named Martin Luther King Jr. And of course, the rest is history. Martin Luther King Jr. does end up getting involved in the anti-Jim Crow movement, becoming the leader of the Montgomery Improvement Association, which leads the Montgomery bus boycott. And Dexter Avenue Baptist Church is never the same again. One of the differences is that Martin Luther King Jr., when he gets there, begins to move the church quickly into switching from deacon control to minister control, to reverend, to preacher control. And he's been taught by his father how to do that because his father is a minister in Atlanta, how to transform it from uh, deacon control to uh, preacher control. So, of course, when he gets to the level of leading this boycott, the, the deacons can't really fire him by that point either. But Second Baptist Church, the foundation, uh, one of the foundations and anchors of the creation of a black community in Detroit and where many of the leaders of the Underground Railroad movement and later the, the movement of black migration to Detroit come out of Second Baptist Church. Um, one of the things about Vernon Johns is he would put his, his sermon on the marquee board of the church. So if you ever go to Montgomery you can, and you go to Dex Avenue Baptist Church, you can see the Capitol building, the state Capitol building, and you can actually throw a rock from Dexter Avenue Baptist Church and almost hit the state Capitol building. So anything that was on that marquee would be seen by the governor, the, the state uh, congress, the state legislators, the, the state federal court, judges, all of them would see this. And so he would put uh, his sermons on the marquee, and he put on the marquee, of course he put the sermon, when the rapist is white, because of all these rapes of black women that were going on in Montgomery, Alabama. And uh, no white person was ever being arrested for these rapes. And then the second thing, the other sermon you're talking about is that if for every other animal, it's a hunting season. It's a rabbit season, it's a duck hunting season, in a season where you can't hunt deer, in a season where you can. 
but black people were being killed in Montgomery, Alabama, and nobody was going to jail for it. So he was like, this, he's like, everybody else has a season, but it's always safe to murder Negroes. And he put that sermon, the name of that sermon, it's always safe to murder Negroes. He put that sermon, the, the name up on the marquee board. So the judges saw it, called the deacons, and the deacons, um, of course, began to pressure um, um, uh, Vernon Johnson stopped doing this, and like I said, eventually it would culminate in his being fired and removed from the church. <laughs> Thank you.